Welcome to Bloodbath and Beyond. Today we're doing a retrospective review of the car. It's a ghost car that runs people over. There was no driver in the car. John basically already summed this movie up. It's a ghost car. It's a really cool looking car that drives around this town, killing people, and the sheriff and his deputies need to try and figure out a way to stop it. Here's a recommendation from Dennis Burnell over on Patreon. We've only done one other car movie, which was Duel, which was a good movie. And once we posted that, everybody was recommending the car. You have to see the car. And I'm sure the algorithm gods are gonna love this video. All those like motorheads out there are gonna be coming in and being like, what is this? Thank you for the recommendation. Let's talk about our likes. I think the car was really cool looking. It's got this big ass grill on the front with some roll bars or something. I really like that it has like a really small top. I don't know why I like that, it just looks really sleek. It looks menacing, I guess. Like if I saw that cruising down the street, especially at the speeds that it's driving, I'm jumping out of the way. And you know what's funny? I liked the ridiculousness of the kills in this film. It just looks funny. Like they, it starts off with a banger with two people riding a bicycle. And when that girl just like gets clipped and flies over and the guy just like, like does 360 flips over the bridge. It seemed to have one up itself on how it would kill people to the point that it killed Lauren by ramping itself through her house. My favorite part was probably when the cops are finally like onto the car. It takes a long ass time to get to that. So that's why we're talking about th what the car actually does. But my favorite part was when the car is coming at two cops and they're just driving beside each other. Like, oh, we're gonna take up the whole road. He there's no way he's getting by us. And the car does like a skid flips sideways, rolls and crushes the cop cars, and then gets back into position and continues driving. It was amazing. And I loved its like animated personality. When one cop car is on like the edge of a mountain and he's just like slowly like closing the door on him. Or when our main sheriff was like going to leave in his motorcycle and he's like, uh, 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 you don't get to open this garage. The car toyed with people and I think that was fun. It had more of a character than some of the characters in this film. There's some great explosions. We get some great crazy explosions, especially the last one. When the car itself blows up, there's like a weird dragon or something that blows fire. We don't know, but there's a big <laughs> ass explosion anyway. And when the guy who's getting like nudged off the cliff, his car blows up almost immediately. It hits one rock. I think that guy was destined to blow up no matter what he did. Like if he stopped too hard, he'd probably go up in flames. I also liked some of the situations because when you're thinking like, okay, what could they possibly do with a car? I mean, now we know, this is the 70s, right? Now we know Fast and the Furious, well, they can do a shit ton with that stuff. They've been making, there's like 10 of those movies and they do all types of stuff. But this one, this is just a basic ass car. No underglow, no missiles and shit. This isn't twisted metal, it's just a car who can do donuts on a dime. And it was great. Like he runs down like a parade filled with children and horses. And one of those horses like stomped on somebody, trampled one almost. He corners them into like this little like graveyard and you got the teacher just like cussing him out. You're a chicken shit! Scum of the earth! Son of a bitch! And the car just like gets mad and you can tell like it's like backing up, doing donuts, getting like pretty pissed. And the fact that it can like emote like that, just being a car, pretty good. I also like that like at first you don't see the full car because it kicks up a lot of dust and it continues to kick up dust like the whole movie. And I thought that was a really great added effect. It adds like an aura, like some kind of mystery to it. We weren't sure a hundred percent if there was somebody in the car, if it's a possessed car, if it's a devil, we don't know. Cause you have POV car vision with like the yellow tint over top of it. Potentially someone could be in the car because it's not like headlight view, like you would assume where the eyes right. would be. Like if it was shot from behind the grill or something, mm -hmm. you'd be like, oh, that's a car. Yeah, that's the car's perspective. But instead it's like the driver's perspective. And like they did put it in like normal situations. I like, thought you were gonna say neutral. Oh, yeah, <laughs> neutral. They put it in neutral situations and then they kicked it into reverse as we had our hitchhiker scene, which was probably one of the best scenes in the whole film. Yeah, that hitchhiker was great. He was so funny. I'm giving you five minutes to move on out of here. Can't move too fast. All I got's my thumb. 
and he died almost immediately, and it pisses me off. That's the thing. They're giving us car-related situations for a car to kill. Them. Now, what didn't we like? I didn't care about any of the characters at all. I mean, I didn't hate them, so don't get me wrong here. Like, I liked Wade, played by James Brolin, and I did like the badass nature of Lauren. Come on! Crawl out. But everybody else is basically throwaway, and I don't know if that's the point. Like, they try to build some characters up. Like, they, they have a drinking problem with one of the guys that doesn't come into play. We have a dickhead who's a wife beater. You don't have to go home, Bertha. We can put you and a kid up in a motel tonight. Who all of a sudden becomes some kind of hero in the final act. Like, I don't understand why they tried to make that a thing. And it felt like they were really trying to push towards a more spiritual nature in indigenous culture, given the fact that they had, like, the elder woman on the street explaining the story, saying that she didn't see a driver, and, like, the cops translating and being like, oh, well... There may be more to this legend than what appears. Like, it felt like they wanted to go in that direction, but didn't know if they should. And they should have because we got zero answers. I get that people looking this movie up and find this video are like, yeah, it doesn't need to make sense. It's a killer card, dummies. It should have some kind of sense. I don't care if it's a ghost, just tell me it's a ghost. But you don't learn anything about the car, what it's doing, why it kills certain people and not others. Like, why does Wade live and why does everybody else die? Like, the car picks and chooses its targets based on seemingly nothing. We're not exposed to that information. And like you said, like, it seems like they wanted to talk more about, like, some kind of backstory and they just didn't. I think that's like the weakest part of this movie is that you don't have any motivation. Yeah, it just was alluded to nonstop, especially when they're like, oh, you can see the car can't enter the graveyard. You figure, all right, there must be some significance behind that. Or the fact that they're constantly referring to Wade's dad who is in passing, who knows where Wade's wife is because he has two children. One of these children end up being in Halloween and Halloween Kills. <laughs> oh yeah, Kyle Richards, I <laughs> yeah. forgot about that. Yep. Yes. So worth mentioning that. But all of this stuff is presented to us, again, with the alcoholic cop. It appears he knows more than he's telling us, and we get none of that. So it's very frustrating. You get nothing. You get a fire dragon. It wants the audience to start questioning what's happening with this car. And it just, you just never get that answer. It's just useless. We have to watch the cyberpunk sequel. Yeah, there's a sequel. 2019, somebody decided to just make the car too. But they made Titanic 2 for no reason, so I would imagine that why not make a car too? Couldn't get the rights to Christine too. It's also just like a long-winded movie because of all of the stuff we just said. It introduces you to characters and gives you a little bit of stuff for like so long. And even though the movie is only an hour and a half, it felt like it was three hours. Speaking of pacing, I thought it was hilarious when they needed to make the cars look like they were going faster and they just sped up the film. <laughs> that cracked me up. I don't know why everybody recommended this. Because it's an inanimate object that kills people. Right, but why wasn't like the refrigerator recommended? That's way cooler than this, probably. Maximum overdrive? No, that's not as cool. I just edited the Horror Geeks video. Go check that out. I did that, yeah. That's not very good. Emilio's fine in it, though. I get that some of you might be huge fans of this, but, like, I don't know. At least Duel, there was purpose. There's no purpose here. Just give us, like, father is disappointed in son, comes back in form of car to kill all. He doesn't want him to be happy, so he's trying to run down his uh, soon-to-be new wife. Or it is the ex-wife who is passed on and doesn't want anybody to replace her, so she's taking everybody out in her path. Uh, I feel like the father would be a more logical choice if you think about it, because the people who died, he's looking at a hitchhiker, hitchhiking is technically illegal, and as a cop, it's his duty to kill <laughs> Okay, him. yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Riding your bicycle, racing on the wrong side of the road, not wearing a helmet, well, gotta kill those people off, jaywalking, kill them. Oh, what are you doing trying to date my son? I don't approve, they had the conversation. Do you think your father would approve of me? Kills the wife? Then Wade should have died. He wasn't wearing his helmet. I'll wear it twice tomorrow. Do as I say, not as I do. I think they just should have said it was Wade's dad who was just disappointed. 
I would have been fine with it. It would have still been a slow ass movie, but. Anyway. Now it's time for our final thoughts and ratings. There are a lot of things that I didn't like about this movie, but I did like some of it. Like I think the car was cool. Uh, the shot types were fine enough. They hit all of the marks that you would want in a killer car movie where the car is controlled by a ghost of some sort. But everything that surrounds the car, like the characters, the situations, the plan to blow up a big ass rock to drop it onto the car, like, it was all just very boring. It's just like a slow paced movie that just feels dated, and rightfully so. So I'm gonna give this two bugles out of five. This isn't any bugle, this is a French horn. I can completely understand where the cult following would be to this film. I liked the car and I liked the concept and how the car was able to showcase emotions and do what it was doing. It just, the story was not the best. It was really drawn out, even though it's short. Like I can't even say they should have trimmed it down because the running time had nothing to do with this. It was all in the pacing. I just feel like this film needed a good explanation to save it and you don't get that. There's a lot of story elements that are built up and left unanswered, so it becomes frustrating. So with that being said, I give this film two hair nibbles out of five. As always, thank you for watching. Like this video and comment below with your thoughts on the film. If you've seen it, if you haven't, do want to check it out. Links are in the description. And if this is your first time here, make sure you subscribe to the channel. Stay up to date with everything here on Bloodbath and Beyond.